This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi friends, today I want to highlight and share some practical tips while dealing with a hard nucleus in a Morganian hypermature cataract. There are certain challenges while dealing with such cases. The nucleus is very mobile and freely floating around and if it is hard then dividing it becomes tricky especially since these eyes have a thin capsule and fragile zonules. There are a couple of issues to deal with in such scenarios. The first thing is that the nucleus is more likely to torque and tilt while we try to chop because of the lack of support. And secondly, there is a risk of putting greater stress on the posterior capsule and the zonules during the chopping maneuvers. This elderly lady has a hypermature cataract and Once I puncture the intercapsule, the milky fluid comes out and hampers the visualization. I just irrigate a little bit and to get rid of the milky fluid and then complete the rexis with the forceps. Now coming to the chopping techniques, we can do both the vertical and the horizontal chop. In this case, first I'll demonstrate the vertical chop. Uh, this is a slightly denser nucleus. The most important secret to achieve a successful chop is always to have a firm grip at the core substance of the nucleus. A slightly bigger or a bulbous phaco tip makes things much more easier to grip the nucleus. However, it's slightly tricky to work with these uh, slightly thinner tips. To work around this problem, the first thing I do is to sculpt out a small central area of the nucleus. While doing this, I'm stabilizing the nucleus with my second instrument to achieve the small trench. The whole idea of creating this small trench is I want to be much more nearer to the central core of the nucleus, which could help me to achieve a firm grip on the nucleus. So once I bury my phaco tip, my right hand moves up a little bit, ensuring the nucleus lifts up a bit. Simultaneously, my left hand with the chopper goes vertically down and then laterally. Once the crack is noted, I keep my right hand steady, pulling the nucleus ever so slightly up, while my left hand is performing the lateral separation, gently repeating it at progressively deeper planes. At this moment, only a part of the entire nucleus is cracked, but it is fine. I'm not in a hurry. Let us go back and see the two movements which I made for the vertical chop. So once I bury my tip, the right hand moves up, lifting up the nucleus slightly. I get this confirmation by seeing that the nucleus is touching the anterior capsule and simultaneously my left hand moves down and then laterally out. By this maneuver, we can ensure that the posterior capsule and the zonules are not put at stress during the chopping maneuvers. Moving on to the next chop, after burying my tip, again I lift up the nucleus and see that it is just touching the anterior capsule, then my chopper goes down vertically and then laterally. It is to be noted that my right hand with the phaco probe is held still and Almost all of the maneuvers are being done primarily with my left hand only. We can see that a small band of the nuclear tissue is just holding these uh, posterior plate of the two fragments together. The fragments are turned up and then easily released by phacoing it. And then the fragment is consumed at the iris plane. The second fragment is then consumed similarly, ensuring that there is minimal turbulence and chatter. For the second piece, I'll demonstrate the horizontal chop. It's easier to perform the horizontal chop in the second heavy nucleus as we've got enough space and we can see things much better. The chopper hooks around the equator of the nucleus and then it is pulled towards the phaco tip giving a full thickness crack quite effortlessly. Well, then why did I not use it as my primary chop? 
The reason is horizontal chop is slightly risky with a large bulky nucleus with an empty bag since the chopper has to hook around the equator of the nucleus and I find it to be too close to the pussy capsule for my comfort especially with a totally empty bag as in this case. Moving on, uh, while emulsifying the fragment, I want to ensure that my plane of emulsification is not too anterior. So one visual clue which I follow is that some part of the nucleus has to be touching the anterior capsule as it is dancing around the phaco tip during emulsification. Well, this clue ensures me that I'm not too anterior. My plane of phaco emulsification is probably at the iris level or at the level of the anterior capsule. Then the aisle is inserted into the bag. The ovary is removed from both in front and behind the lens. Well, the case is done. Hope you found these few tips useful and thank you for watching.